Welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where, whisper it, I think spring might have sprung here in the UK. We've had a couple of really beautiful days in a row, and it's about time too, I have to tell you. Um, now, we've got a very, very interesting Sudoku today. This is called, uh, well, it's called Look and Say Killer 2, and it's by Directionary. And I have read the rules, and they are very interesting indeed. If you study this grid for any amount of time, it will confuse you. <laughs> for instance, this killer cage appears to have the sum of 2,412. It's sort of a little schadenfreudic part of me that hopes that some people don't even read the instructions and just dash into trying to solve the puzzle and then wonder how on earth they're going to make this work. Um, but apparently this is approachable as well. I should tell you that. So if you have been struggling, and I wouldn't blame you, like what was yesterday? Well, the title of yesterday's video was World's Hardest, the World's Hardest Sudoku. Um, and yeah, we, we have been doing some monsters recently. This one should be better though. Um, now, speaking of the world's hardest Sudoku, some of you have actually managed to solve it. So this is something we posted on Patreon yesterday. It's a puzzle that Philip Newman has found really. I say found rather than invented. Um, and Philip describes it as the hardest uh, classic Sudoku in existence. It, it grades something like 11.9 on some Richter scale of impossibleness. Um, and several of you have sent in entries to our competition uh, in which you have sort of outlined the logical path you took through that puzzle, which is really, really amazing because no computer will be able to find a logical path through it. They'll, they'll all just resort to guessing. So have a go at that if you haven't had a go at it. It's on Patreon right now. Um, it's called Palpaz Palpatine's Design, I think. Um, and send in your entry if you manage to solve it logically. And also remember to send in how you did it logically. Uh, and we're going to run that competition until the end of March. Um, and there will be prize or prizes for the best entry, as judged, I should say, by Philip. So, yeah, um, he, he, being the inventor of the puzzle, will also be able to decide who spotted the logic correctly. Um, other than that, well, by the time this video goes live, um, the monthly reward for uh, March will, that, that competition will be closed. So I hope everybody who was planning to send an entry has managed to do that. We have had over 2000 correct entries, which is staggering. Um, well done to everybody who took part in that. And I hope uh, well, I, I mean, we gather from the comments that you enjoyed it, and it well, we're thrilled. We're thrilled about that indeed. Now, I have one more thing I need to talk about today. I need to say a big thank you to some folks who really helped us to make our book what it was. So I, I know many of you have bought the book. Here it is. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, and I need to say thank you to the following. Portishead Blue, uh, to Becky Moore, to John Brown, to Mike Popolowski to Tom Lomas, um, and I think Tom wanted me to shout out his brother Benjamin as well, um, Jesse Grandon, Jack McVean, uh, Eric Michelson, uh, Cliff D from Connecticut, the USA, Eric in Bahrain, Nami, John and Andrew Weeks, who I think are a father and son solving duo, um, and I think Andrew is in Orange County, is it California? Um, and John is in Switzerland. <laughs> the two of them solve the puzzles together, which is fabulous. Uh, Anders Carlson, uh, Adam Itzo, Felipe Palmer, Grayson Ingram, and Jaron Lott. All of you, thanks so much for your support. We really appreciate it. Um, now, that's all I've got to tell you. Let's have a look at Directionary's puzzle. Here are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits may repeat in cages and along indicated diagonals, so digits can repeat in cages. That's already strange. Every given clue should be read as a look and say number. Each number says which digits are in the respective cage or on the respective diagonal. And thankfully there are some examples, so if you're stuck here, don't worry. E.g. if a cage clue is one, two, two, one. I don't know if we've got, no, we haven't got any cages like that. But if a cage clue was clued as one, two, two, one, this means that there is one, two, and two ones in the cage. So you have to read it as one, two, so there's one, two, two, one. So there's two ones. Isn't that clever? If a diagonal says three, three, then it's not 33. You have to read it as there are three threes along the diagonal. So let's just have a look at this and see if we can understand. So this, this 
This is not a 25 clue, it's a two fives. There's two fives in that cage. So that's going to be quite interesting immediately. Um, let's have a look at one of the more complicated ones. So this is two, two, four, one, two. So there are two fours and one two in this cage. Isn't this cool? And on the diagonal, that means that there must be two nines on that diagonal. So I'm no doubt going to make an absolute Horlicks of this, but I'm going to have a go at it now. Do have a go yourselves. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. So I'm going to. I'm actually going to start with that that two five clue because you, obviously if there are two fives in that cage, they've got to be there because normal Sudoku rules do apply. So we can't put two fives in the same column. So now there's a five up there somewhere. There's one one on this diagonal. Um, there's three threes on this diagonal, and that's a little interesting because you obviously can't repeat three within any individual box. So there must be a three in one of those, there must be a three in one of those, and there must be a three in one of those. Two fours on this diagonal. Oh, well, actually, that's still worth, that is still worth notating, isn't it? There's only two boxes that this 2-4 clue goes through, so there must be a 4 in one of those, and there must be a 4 in one of those three. What's this clue? I can't read it. 30, uh, not, no, 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 it's not 33, it's three threes. Um, it's three, oh, th oh, yeah, well, okay, this, this cage goes through three boxes of the Sudoku. One, that's one box, that's two boxes. That's three boxes, so there must be a three in every box that this cage visits, because there cannot be two, two, uh, two threes in a box. So those must be threes, which means these are not threes, and there must be a three in this domino in column eight to provide this cage with its third three. And oh, look, this is lovely. So now those are not threes, and there's a, th and that's three in the corner. <laughs> that's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, very, very good to see. Um, okay, there's one, two in that cage. Is that, I think it's still worth notating. Um, there's one, two on this diagonal. Yeah, so presumably there's a, there's a slight negative constraint here, isn't there? So if, if, for example, one of those was a two, we would know there was no twos on the rest of the diagonal because otherwise this would have had to have be clued differently it would have to be two twos or three twos or something like that what's that i can't read what that says one six one seven so there's a six and a seven in that cage is no oh no i thought that was a triple but the five actually look yeah the five could escape the cage and be in the top position right so what now oh two eights here so there's this clue visits three different boxes, so we don't think we know how those eights are disposed. If you if the eights were in those two positions, you uh, no, yeah, I was just wondering whether that would force an eight onto the diagonal, but it doesn't at all, so that's no problem. So I'm not sure we can do anything with the two eight clue yet. Okay, let's look at what's that clue? I can't read it. I don't know if I've got my settings messed up at the moment. I keep not being able to read the killer cages. Let me just have a look. Now I've got large digits on. I think that's what I meant to have. Um, can't see anything else there. So this one was two sevens. Right, and this cage is in two boxes. So that's a seven, and there must be a seven in this domino. And now there's a seven by Sudoku here. And we've got, I'm going to leave these cages till last, I think. Let's carry on and see if we can do more with the diagonals. Three eights on this diagonal, which is one, two, three, four. No, that's going through five boxes, so I don't think that's going to help us. Two, nine, ah, two nines on this diagonal. It only goes through two boxes, so there must be nines in one of these three cells and one of these three cells. One, three on this diagonal. It's not here. Right, so there must be a three. Oh no. Yeah, so there must be a three in box one in one of those two positions. This can't be a three either because of the not the given three, the hard earned three in the corner. A uh, one nine 
down there. Well, that could be here, but needn't be. Uh, oh, three ones on this diagonal, and that goes one, two, th that goes through five boxes again. So that's annoying. That's nearly very interesting. Uh, oh, now, now, okay, so right, so we are going to have to look at the complicated clues. So we've got two fours and one two. Oh, yeah, okay, this is easy. So two fours in this cage. Well, I can only put one four in column five, so that's a four, which means there's another four to be placed in this cage, and that can't go in box eight, so that's got to be here. Now those two can't be fours, so we get a four up there. And we need to put one two in here as well, which I could. Shall I pencil mark that, or is that going to get confused? I think I'll risk it. Hopefully, my my brain will see that these twos and these twos can't coexist simultaneously, and I will understand the nature of my pencil mark. Now here we've got two oh, we've got two ones and two twos to put in this cage. which strikes me as tricky. I immediately want to say that this is a one-two pair, but I can't immediately just, I don't know why my brain is telling me that. Um, obviously we could only have, so let's, let's start with the digit one. We have to put two ones in this cage. So at least, ah, yes, I see, right. So I think my brain is correct. Well done, brain. And that's because, uh, imagine you try to put two ones in the wings of this sort of Z pentomino. The implication of that would be that now I have to put two twos into row seven and that clearly won't work. So I can't put ones in both wings of the Z pentomino. Now can I put wings in no wings of the pentomino? Well clearly not because then I'm going to get repeated ones in row seven. So there must be a one in exactly one of those positions, but that logic will apply for any digit that has to appear twice in the Z pentomino. And the clue is telling us that it applies for two as well. So these two squares must be a one, two pair. Isn't that weird that my brain sort of knew that before, sort of subconsciously before I could actually articulate it. So there's a one and, a... yes, okay, so because there's now a one and a two in these cells. That's not a two. So if that's a two, if that's a two, then you have to put a two here and a two here. Oh, <laughs> well that doesn't work for a weird reason. If this is a two, then you can't put a 2 in the L tetromino in box 1, I don't think. If that's a 2, because we've still got to put two 2s in the Z pentomino, and this is a 2 for sure then, that will be a 2, and now you can't put 2 up there. So that is not a 2, which means I've now found a 2-4 pair in column 5. So there's a 2 here. Um, and hmm, I don't know. I sort of feel like I must be able to do something on the interaction of this and this. I can't have twos in those two positions, but I could have a two here, a two here, and a two here. Or I could have a two here a two here and a two here. Or I could probably have a two there and a two there and a two up here. Right, okay, so I don't think we can resolve this properly. We've got a two four pair that we've earned in box five. So we probably have to look at, I'm not exactly sure. I'm almost tempted to go through the clues again. Now I've got some digits in the grid to see if if what I've put in has, is going to help me more with any of these 
clues. I'm just looking at it now. I've got three ones in this diagonal, which might be in, impacted by the Z pentomino. And I've also look, got quite a lot of eights, and now those clues don't hit each other. Two, three, uh, six boxes of eights. That's nearly that's nearly restricted. Right, I'm going to think about the three ones clue, I think. The three ones clue, and the fact I've got to put two ones in that. So let's just highlight all these cells. So those cells there need to have three ones in them, and those cells there need to have two ones in them. One, two, ah. Two, three, four, five. One box, two box, three, four, five, six boxes. So we've got to put five ones into six boxes. Ah, I've got it. Right, OK. This square here cannot be a one. This is beautiful. This is going to give me loads of ones. because, th And this can't be a one because it breaks the nature of the Z pentomino. If you put one there... Now I can't put one in either of those wing cells, and we know there must be a one in a wing cell. So this is not able to be a one, and now this 31 clue combined with this cage, they only inhabit five boxes of the Sudoku, I think. One, one, two, three, yeah, four, five. So those five ones must appear in each of these boxes, which tells me these are ones. There's a one in, right, there must be a one in this domino now. So that can't be a one. One of these is a one. So that will remove. So if this was a one, you'd, if this was a one, you'd have to put a one in one of those two positions. And if this is a one, you'd have to put a one in one of those two positions. Um, hmm. Okay, so what, what do these ones do for the world? Do they do anything up here? Yes, they do, because there's one one on the 11 diagonal, which isn't really an 11 diagonal. That can't be one, that can't be one. So we get a one in box three, which means one is in one of two places in box two, two places in box six. And oh no, this is one three. It's not. It's not. It's not three ones or anything to do with ones. It's one three on that diagonal. Um, okay. I might have a look at the eights. That was the other clue I wanted to look at. I don't think I can do more with the ones, can I? Or if I can, it's not obvious to me how. So I'm going to look at eights. So those cells there, which will need a different colour. In fact, I'm going to change the purple colour to something that's going to help uh, colour blindness a bit better. I'll do blue for those, and then I can do the 3-8 diagonal. I can make orange, and I think that should be clear. And the 2-8 diagonal, I'll make orange. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 boxes to put five eights into and that's beautiful again that is beautiful again those two can't both be eights this is really clever actually isn't it this puzzle it's 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 a simple rule but but the logic that directionary has built into it is is really elegant so now because you can't put eights in both of those cells hopefully for obvious reasons if you try that you will break the rules of sudoku that means there's one eight there there must be an 8 in one of those three. There must be an 8 in one of those three oranges. There must be an 8 here. And this can't be an 8, so I want to say that this must be an 8. So 1, 2, 3. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? So now there must be an 8 in that, I want to say a 12 cage. You know what I mean, the 1, 2 cage. Um... One, two, three, four, five. Now, OK. 
can we somehow can we somehow know where these eights go? That's the question I'm asking myself. Yeah, well I can <laughs> well yes no. <laughs> I could tell you a cell they don't go in. They don't go in that one. Because if that was an eight, now I can't put two eights on the two eight diagonal because I couldn't put an eight here and I couldn't put an eight there. So this would have to simultaneously be double eight and that's just silly. So that is not eight. Oh, whoa, whoa, I want it still to be able to be five and therefore this square loses its orangeness. Which means, now can I do the same with, no. So if this is an eight, then I have to put an eight here and an eight in here, which is fine, I think. I get two eights on that diagonal and three eights on this diagonal. So this one doesn't work the same way. Um, oh, I'll tell you what I can do now, though. Earlier on, I wondered whether these two cells could be eights, and that's no, that is no longer possible. Because if you did put the, the eights on the two eight diagonal into those two positions, now this can't be an eight, and these two can't be eights, and I could only put two eights on the three eight diagonal. So those two, so it's not possible to have eights in those two, so there must be an eight in here. All right, and I can't actually read what, the, oh, this was, Hang on, let me just check what that says. 1617. Right, so that, that is useful because, the, because there is now an 8 in one of those two squares and there must be a 6 and a 7 in this cage, that square has become a 5 because it's not able to live in the cage anymore, which is now a 6, 7, 8 cage with the 8 on the diagonal. And that means, okay, well that means four in this box is in one of those two cells, which means absolutely diddly squat. Um, so these, the, set, the digits we've not put in box three are two, four, and nine. I don't think we know anything about those digits. <laughs> we probably do. There's probably some clue or other that tells me about these, but let me just think about that for a second or two. We've got two in there. Um, I've got a five in there. None of the clues talk about fives, I don't think. Oh no, this, this talked about fives. Oh dear, okay, so I don't really understand how to do more with that. There's an 8 in one of these two, so if the 8 was here, this wouldn't be an 8. There would be an 8 here in one of those two. Then there would have to be an 8 in this cell. Hmm, I don't, I don't quite know how to take this forward. Um, Right, so which clues have I still not used? I've not used, I know there's a four in one of those. I've just looked at the eight. The three, three clue, don't know if that's resolved. I don't think so. The three, eight clue I've looked at. The two, nine clue, doesn't seem to do anything. One, three on this, oh, no, that doesn't do anything, I don't think. Three ones on this diagonal again. One, two on the. Oh no, I'm running out. I'm running out of clues here. I'm running out of clues. Is it the ones? Have I not done enough with the ones? So let's think about the ones again. I need to put a one, one more one on this in one of those three cells. That seems to be very possible. If you put the one in either of those, this would become a two, and that would become a one. I 
Oh. Oh, that's right. Does that matter though? Yeah, hang on. There's something more subtle about this Z pentomino, I think. This square can't be a two. But that's because if this is a two, it pushes the one here in, in, in this string of digits. We know there's a one and a two. So if this is a two, that's a one. And now that's a two, and that breaks this again. You remember earlier, I think I eliminated a two from this cell for this reason, but I didn't realize that I could also do the same logic with this cell. Or maybe I couldn't do it at that point, because maybe this could be a one at that point. I'm not sure. But anyway, I can certainly see at this point, this can't be a two. Now, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, OK, so that is that is important. Because now, if we look at the nature, I know there's a two in one of those cells. And I know there's a two in one of those cells. And that means in this domino, there must be a two. And in this domino, there must be a two. So that means that there must be a two in one of those three cells. But perhaps more importantly, there must be a two in one of those three cells. Therefore, there is no two up here. And this square is a two. which means that square is not a two. Now, <laughs> what does that do? Oh, I suppose that removes two from that cell. Okay, that's good. So there's now a two pushed up into these orange cells where we where we know we've got to think about eights. I've got twos in these dominoes. And I've got two a two in this domino. So if that was a two, we'd get a two here. Hmm, okay. Um, am I supposed to be able to understand what to do with this new knowledge? The answer is probably. Is it something to do with ones then? So I know there's a one in one of those two cells. I can't remember why I know that, but that does seem to be the implication of my pencil marking. So there must be a one in one of those three cells. And no, okay. I don't know what to do. Uh, that cell can't be a one. Because on this diagonal, if this was a one, you're removing one from too many cells in the Z pentomino. So that's not a one. Yeah, and that's not a one either. For the same. Why is yeah one is a one is one shouldn't be one has to go in blue cells. This is not capable of being blue anymore. But I don't actually think that's helped me. I mean, it's tidied up my pencil. Oh no! It ha oh no! It hasn't. <laughs> no, it hasn't. It really hasn't. There's a one in one of these two positions, and that doesn't help me. Okay, so we've got to still carry on thinking. What else can we do here? We can, in this row, we need ones, twos, sixes, and nines. So that's that's just six or nine, this square, because it can't be two and it can't be one. Is that somehow helpful? Oh, oh, no, no, right. I'm, I know, I know what we've got to do. When did I get this two? Oh, I got this two from this domino having to contain a two. And that's really massive. Look, I've got one two on this diagonal. And that's going to disambiguate this square. So that's a four and that's a two. And now four in that box has to go here. I mean, it is approachable this, but it's not that easy, I don't think. I'm probably doing it in the world's most inefficient way. Um, so now I've got... I've got a two here, 
Oh, I see, yeah. And that two is looking at that cell. So that's a one, that's a two. And now one must go here in the in the Z pentomino, and two must go there. And all of a sudden, things are starting to hot up now. So now we can go. What else can we do with this new knowledge that we've got? We've got a one. Yes, okay, so where does the third one go on this diagonal? It has to go here now, because it can't go there anymore. Which places a one up in box number two. Two by Sudoku is in one of those two cells. And, and it's not on this diagonal again, so it goes here which means two is not there so that becomes nine that becomes four that becomes two good grief okay yeah this is very clever stuff now we've got four in one of those four by sudoku into that cell um we might be able to do better than that but i can't see how immediately five six eight and nine into those cells let's just highlight those and see if that tells us anything this square's got to be a six or a nine. And that cell can't be a nine anymore. That cell can't be a two anymore. So this is now a two apparently. And that means that's taken one of my orange cells away. And that means that this square, to fill my two eight clue, I need to put an eight here. And that means that cell's become a one. That cell becomes an eight by Sudoku, and this is a six nine pair. And, and that means that's not an eight. So that loses its orangeness. And there must be an eight. Yes, there must be an eight in this in this diagonal arrangement here. Why didn't that turn into being a two? I wanted it to have to be a two. There we go. It finally has done what it's supposed to do. So now we've got six, sevens and eights. We know where the eight goes. So this is a six, seven pair. And um, we might have to go back to studying these diagonals again because I've totally lost track of which ones we've actually we've actually used now. Um, three apparently has to be in one of those two cells. I know. Oh, is that this is the one three clue? Oh, oh no, okay, I thought the nine clue was about to get interesting there. The one nine clue, but no. It would it would be very interesting if this square was not nine. There's a little trick we can do. Nine has to be in that these two squares, and nine has to be in these two squares, so we should be asking where nine goes in column six. It's got to go in one of those two positions. And that might be useful or not. It appears not. Eight here. So this is an eight. So now I've got a six, seven pair there, which means in this column I've not put two and nine. And I can do that. Two, nine. Nine here. Nine here by Sudoku. Oh, so now... Now my one nine clue is useful. Actually, it's very useful. Yeah, this is beautiful. These nines getting resolved locks a nine out of the diagonal in box four. So there must be a nine in one of those three cells to fulfill the one nine clue, and it's got to go there. So that's nine, that's six, that's nine. Let's click on the nine. Yeah, we can get more nines done. That's nine, that's three. Three is in one of those two cells. No, it's not, because this three is blonking a three in one of those two cells, which means there's no three here. So this is a three. These squares are, oh, eight's now got to go here, because we know one of those was an eight. So these squares have got to be fives, sixes, and sevens, but we don't necessarily know the order. So that's got to be a five, six, or a seven. That can't be a seven. So now there's a seven in this domino, which resolves the six, seven in that domino, which resolves the five, seven here and gives us a six. Now these two squares have got to be four and five, which might not be resolved. And 
Okay, so I've got I've still got no clue which of these um which of these clues is sort of we've left hanging. I've got uh, look, I can fill in these digits in terms of the options. Three, sixes and sevens. Now that doesn't seem to be for any use at all. Two I've got two fours on that diagonal. One one here, three. I've got to put a three in one of those two. Don't know if we know which one. Um, okay, what have we not used? Two nines, it's probably Sudoku. Oh yeah, look, two, two, two places a two here. So all the twos are done. What about all the ones? All the ones should be done if we complete our Sudoku like that. Threes, oh no, hardly any threes. Um, I'm not seeing a way of resolving those fours. Again, not seeing a way of resolving those. Um, right, let's try this column then. We'll have to, I think we're going to have to resort. Yeah, that's doable. Five and eight go into the grid. So these squares are six and seven, which is resolved by six here so that results the seven and the five okay so it was sudoku what a surprise those two squares have got to be three and eight and that's resolved by sudoku that places the three down here locks a four into this funny oh that's a, is that a 27 cage can't even read it yeah 27 cage so that's well two seven so there's a seven up here but i'm not sure we do better than that Four sixes and oh, where does nine go in this row? It can only go in row nine, column nine. So that's quite helpful. So this is a four six pair, and these squares need to be five seven and nine. So the nine goes here, and the five sevens go into these cells. And this must nearly be resolved, isn't it? So now we can get rid of this one. Can't do anything with that car. That's a naked single. That's a six. Okay, which means this digit is now known. That's got to be five. That's a five. That's a seven. That's a five. That's a four. That's a four. That's a six. This column needs a three in it. That's got to go there. So three and seven get placed. This row needs a six in it, so that's six, that's six, that's seven, that's seven, that's four. There we go. Yay! <laughs> very, very nice puzzle indeed. Something very original, actually. Um, completely mad rule set, but, but very enjoyable for that. And, I, I mean, although the tester said this was approachable, I, I probably just did it in the wrong order or something. I didn't find it that easy. It, what I did find is it is that it was very interesting and elegant and the keys seem to be ones and twos in that z pentomino and the ones on that diagonal but also the way these eights interacted that was seriously clever um it's a lovely puzzle really is i hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comments i do enjoy reading them especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic mm -hmm.